So, I'm to talk to you about supernatural perfection. Let, let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you are our Father. Yes, you know our needs. You know us. <laughs> you know us. Mistakes, inadequacies, strengths, joy, pain, sorrow, questions, requests, everything. You know us. And you have ordained this day. I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that every ear that is hearing me right now and the ones that we hear in the future, that, Father, this word will be lightened upon their heart, that they may understand in depth what it is that you want them to know. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, to be able to understand... A phrase, a sentence, it's best to break it down in simple words. And divine means supernatural. Perfection means wholeness, to be complete without defects. So we're talking about supernatural completeness, supernatural wholeness. There's a scripture that I love very much and I tend to share with people. I'm, I'm just going to make it very literary so it'll be easier for you to understand. The reason for that is because a lot of us do, we know scriptures. You know, you know the KJV, you know, scriptures for almost everything. And before I say it, you're likely to just echo it. And many times scriptures lose their meaning because we haven't managed to look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. We've just managed to download it from, you know, from here, the bottom of our brain, and we just say it without having a deep thought what it is that we're talking about. The Bible says, when a prince is born, he is a child, just like any other child, and he is no different from anybody else within the family. Until he has grown up, then he knows his identity. Then he will have access to many things. I am sure many of you are already thinking and identifying which scripture that is. It is in Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Now I'll read it to you in a way you've, you've understood and in a way you've known it for many years. It says, let me explain further. As long as an heir is a child, he is no better off than a slave. Even though he owns everything, he is placed under the control of guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So, the fact that that heir is, does not, is not managing everything does not stop him from being the prince doesn't stop him from being the head to the throne. It doesn't remove an iota of what he is and who he is. But for a moment, it appears as though he is the same as any of the slaves. And if anybody meets this particular hair on the streets or whilst playing football with the rest of the children in the neighborhood, they're not likely to treat him any differently. Having said that, the three groups of people on this meeting tonight, one is the unaware well. Now, I'm talking about that from the point of view of a medical doctor. There are many people who come in to see me on a daily basis. They are worried. They're worried. They, you know, something perched on their cheek yesterday and they're wondering, oh God, is this going to be bad? Is this going to be serious? Ah, are they going to die? They are unaware that they are well and that there is nothing wrong with them because they are panicking. And why are they panicking? One, because of the things they've heard. Two, probably because of the things they've seen on the internet. Or three, because they're just really anxious people. So these people are good and ready to go, but they have been convinced that they need something else. So they carry power, but they are unaware. I am not sure what has been spoken in the past two days, but I'm hoping that the Lord will bring you a new light 
from this perspective. We're talking about supernatural perfection, divine perfection. So many times we Christians, we look at God as somebody somewhere who's done a little bit of job, but hasn't managed to get it right. So we're looking for something else that will just make us perfect. We're looking for something else that if, if, if God will just add a little bit of this to my life, it will be just grand. I will be just good. I will be so good for ministry. If only I can just do this extra. If only I can just get this extra. If only I can just be this extra. The truth is, that is a lie from hell. You are perfect. You were made ready. <laughs> you were made ready. The word of God says in Colossians 2 verse 8 to 10. New Living Translation says, Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are also complete through your union with Christ. He is the head of over every ruler and authority. Did you see that? You are perfect in Christ. You are not trying to be perfect. This is a provision. Look, when you look at me the way I am, I am Omobola Jeffries. I don't need a tattoo to confirm it. I don't need an extra hole in my ear to confirm it. I am this amazing, this awesome creation of God who has been released to the surface of the earth to come and do beautiful things. When we pray, when we come upon the altar of prayer most of the time, we pray that God will perfect us. We're waiting for God to perfect us. No, you are done. As in, the final product has been released. You know, this weight... This prayer, what does it do to us? One, it, it belittles the, the competence of God. Two, it makes us look at the future as though we're waiting for something. Let me give you an example. If I drove to the airport, Heathrow Airport, which is a major airport in the UK, one of the major airports in the UK, and... I am meant to pick a sibling up and they are arriving at 10 past 2. What do I do? I look at the board. The minute it is announced on the board that the KL 357 from Amsterdam arrived at 10 past 2, am I still waiting for anything? No. What do I do? I go to the arrival gate. I pick them up. If I convince myself that my sibling had missed that flight, I'm just going to sit down there at the airport. And what is going to happen to me? I'm going to pay for more for parking. I'm going to delay myself. I will confuse the person I'm coming to pick. So when you give an impression that there is still something else that needs to be done for God to, 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 to finish you up and to sort you out, what are you doing? You are one. Stopping yourself from living the best that you can live. Being the best that you can be. You're stopping yourself from releasing yourself into the completeness in Christ. It says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. I don't know majority of the people on this, on this session tonight. But can I say something to you? The Bible says they are high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and spiritual powers of this world. What are examples of that? Quite a lot of them come from the body of Christ, the physical body of Christ. We have managed to teach many things for long enough, even though there is no basis in the word. We have embraced them and taken them as our own. Let me give you an example. If you need power as a Christian, you need to fast for 40 days and 49. High-sounding nonsense. Where is that written in the Bible? 
People look at Jesus Christ and the fact that Jesus Christ fasted for that many days and they say, oh God, Jesus fasted. That was how he managed to defeat the devil. So they fast. Go read the Bible. That is not what is in the Bible. The word of God says Jesus was led by the spirit of God into the desert to be tempted of the devil. And whilst he was at it, he did not eat. Jesus himself is the power of God. He did not need to go without food to get power. What did he do? He fed on the will of God. What is the will of God? The word of God that you have in your hands. And that's the reason why many of us fast for seven days, we fast for 14 days, we fast for 21 days, we fast for, at the end of that time, there's no change in you. You're just a bit slimmer and healthier. And still, the problems that you've been trusting God for are still there. Why? Because you have not gone into the word of God to get understanding and to get insight. You haven't managed to ask God, what is the root cause of Root, root cause of what you're dealing with. You've just managed to go without food. And because of that, your circumstances are still the same. We're talking about divine perfection. There is an availability that is for you. And that is in the word of God. And once you realize that the completeness of everything you will ever need is in the word of God and God has made provision for it, you just need to put the pain and get the cash and use it. Then, you will stop waiting for a perfection that is in the future or that will come by what you do. Now, let me move on very quickly. God created you. You are perfect. You are equipped with all that you will ever need. You are equipped with all that you will ever need. Many women are on this line. Men are on this line as well. But I tend to address women a lot. So you may hear me making references to women. None of us got a womb when we got married. Nobody, no woman here got a womb on their wedding day. <laughs> Have you ever thought about it? Nobody got given a womb on their wedding day. God already perfected that expectation of you to be able to produce children from when you were yet in your mother's womb. Another example to give you. When God created the universe, he created animals. He created birds. Do you have an idea how long ago that was? This is year 2022. Assuming, okay, we are counting the years, you know, after the death of Christ. But my brethren, in the years before the death of Christ, this universe was created. God created birds. And God put insulation on their feet. Electricity was created, was discovered. How many years ago? How many years ago? But God at creation already insulated the feet of the birds so that they can perch on electric poles without getting electrocuted. That is the God I'm talking about. He perfected the ability of birds to survive on electric poles and electric wires way before human beings conceived that they needed to have electricity. As a result of that, what does that tell you about your life? What does that tell you about your prayer requests? What does that tell you about what you're fasting and praying about? What does that tell you about the project you are doing? He knows the end from the beginning. So every time you try to help yourself, God is looking at you and he's saying, if only this gentleman knows that I've sorted this matter. If only this lady knows that I've already made good this issue they're worrying about. If only this person knows 
that have already gone ahead of them on this journey. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and they will do amazing things. Recently, I was ministering in Maryland, USA. And I asked the ladies a question. I said, if you knew what course your son should study at the university, will you be worried? Most of them said no. I said, if you had an idea who your, your husband now, who your husband is, if you knew them 10 years ago, assuming you were not married 10 years ago, would you have married him? Most of the women in the room said no. The question is, this perfection we're looking for, you may be looking for the wrong thing. I think what we need is information and insight so that we can understand where God is leading us. If you know who God is, the Bible says those that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. I presume that there are a few people on this line tonight. You are in ministry. And you are asking that the Lord will perfect this ministry. Few questions I have for you. What really did God call you to do? How did he say you will do it? When did he say you will start? When did he say you will reach the threshold that you are praying for? Who are the people he has assigned to you? And what is the outcome that God has given you? Let me give you an example. Some years ago, I was to have a meeting. I think it was also in Maryland. And I had been to one other city in the United States. And I was going to fly to Maryland for this second meeting. And whilst I was in the first meeting, the coordinator, my coordinator for Maryland contacted me and said, Dr. Moby, I don't know if this meeting will hold. I asked why. She said there is a severe weather warning. There is severe snow and there is, you know, an alert that people should not travel, people should not go out. I said to her, I said, God says there are 35 women at this meeting. So what are you talking about? Then she laughed and she said, oh, I said, yes, there are 35 women and there was sunshine. So she said, all right, then no problem. So we'll continue with the plan. When I flew into Maryland, the day before the meeting, we had to stay in the airspace for a while because it was so bad. When you look down from the plane, everywhere was white. It was as though it was Christmas. We landed, went to my hotel. As soon as my coordinator left me, guess what I did? I shut the windows, the curtains. I closed everything up. And I stayed in the presence of God. Why? A natural human being will be looking outside and worrying. Oh gosh. Lord, perfect that which concerns this meeting tomorrow. Lord, do that which only you can do regarding this meeting tomorrow. No. I was not praying that prayer. I was just making sure that I was ready. I was making sure that I had every word that was meant for every person in that meeting. And on the morning of the meeting... I opened the curtains and blast in my face was a sunshine. It was so bright. I was like, oh, and then I closed it again and I waited for my pickup. That particular meeting, the couple who led praise worship drove three hours to come to the meeting. And we had the exact number of women that God had spoken were going to come to that meeting. When you have insight and you have understanding and you have information, there are many prayers you will not be praying. One of them is the prayer of a kind of perfection that you think is normal. I did not pray for God to remove the snow. I did not pray that the weather warning should be lifted. I did not even pray that people should come. All I did was to ask God, what would you like to do at this meeting? And how should I prepare for this meeting? 
If I call prayer for perfection, everybody that you know will be on this line. What are they looking for? They want God to come and do something he hasn't done. But sincerely, brethren, God has finished what he was going to do in your life. He is just unraveling and revealing yourself to you step by step. If only you have information of what is next, you will not worry or pray that it should perfect something. When you mix your cake, when you mix your flour, when you mix your butter and your sugar, you don't stand there praying for perfection. What do you do? You chuck it in the oven and then you give it time. Why? Because the recipe says if you mix that amount of sugar, that amount of flour, that amount of butter, and you leave it for 35 minutes, you will have a sponge cake. You don't argue with the recipe. You don't stand there banging on the oven. You don't stand there stomping your feet. What do you do? You prepare the mixture, put it in the oven, give it time, and then what comes out is a perfect cake as long as you followed the recipe. The concern is that majority of us as Christians, we don't have the recipe. We don't follow the instructions in the manual. Then we start praying for perfection. No, brethren, you need to get it right from scratch, doing it the way God wants it to be done, and you will get the result that he wants. I move on to the next one. I told you that there are three groups of people. The first one are the unaware. Well, there is nothing wrong with them. They just panicking because they are unaware. They don't have information. The second group of people that may be here this morning are the momentary doubters due to challenges. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 9, God's Word's translation says, Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Once more, the devil took him to a very high mountain, I had skipped a few verses there, and showed him all the kingdoms in the world and their glory. The devil said to him, I will give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. Listen, what was the devil look, uh, offering Jesus? He was offering Jesus perfection. He says, I will give you all of this. Essentially, the devil was trying to tell Jesus that he didn't have everything. He was trying to play on Jesus' psyche. He was telling Jesus, you just need this one, this one that I have. You just need this, this, this picture I've showed you. You just need it so that you can be okay. And Jesus said to him, no way, get thee behind me, get off. How many times have you looked at your life? And the enemy has told you, if only you can just get this. That was what he did to Jesus. If only you can just get this, everything will be perfect. No. No. Mature people know that that's not the truth. You will, you will not become perfect when the enemy manages to give you an extra. When he manages to do something more that you... No, for goodness sake, the whole of the universe belongs to Jesus. <laughs> if Jesus was not knowledgeable about his person and his rights, the devil would have got him. The devil would have... No, how can somebody... Who, that is what... <laughs> that is the crime that we see on the internet. They tell you, you've got 10,000. I will make it 100,000 for you. The person who doesn't have a hundred thousand promises you a hundred thousand and then you give your ten thousand and then you find out that you're in big trouble. Many times when we're seeking this extra thing, it is because we don't know what we have. Before you seek for perfection from anybody and anywhere, always look at the track record of who's making the promise. God, the Father says, you are complete in me, in him. What more are you looking for? What more are you looking for? Says you are complete in him. You have been assessed. You faced the exam board. They said you passed. 
You say, but I only scored 79. But the pass mark is 74. What more are you looking for? They say you are good enough. You are, you are, you are okay. You say, but somebody scored 92. But you are not that person. God says, by my assessment of your ability, you meet the criteria. You say, but I want what that person has. Addressing people in ministry. Many people contact me and ask me, oh, the success you have in ministry. How did you come about it? What, do, what, what did you do? I laughed. I said, be like me. What do I do? I lean where God is leaning. I don't know how to do anything. If God says, Omobola, I want to open the wombs of women in the month of August, I quickly go and announce. God wants to open the womb of women. If you're looking for a child, come quickly. Then people come. And then I lead them to pray regarding God opening their womb. And then they get pregnant. And then they're like, ha, ah, Omobi, a powerful woman of God. Look, the power came in obedience. The power came in the promise that God has made. What is the word you have for what you are doing? Some women, some people feel inadequate. They said, oh, eh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm running a ministry. I've got a group on Facebook. I've got a group on Instagram. I am whatever. I call a meeting. Seven people attend. I'm not successful. Some people call meeting. 500 people attend. I laugh at them. I ask them. Who did God say this word is for? Who did God? For you to be able to decide whether you need to be better. At least you need to know who you are. You need to know what God has promised. I'm going to lead you to pray. But you see, we will be praying stupid prayer points if you don't have understanding. You don't need to prove a point to anybody. God is the one who is assessing you for excellence in what you're doing. If God has called you to minister to 15 people and 15 people turn up, you scored 100%. If God has called you to go and speak only to the homeless, don't be desirous of climbing the pulpit to be speaking to millionaires. That is where we fail. That is the reason why a lot of us are moving from one thing to the other and we do not seem to have any focus at all. We're asking that God will perfect projects that he has not sent us to. And it seems as though your prayer lacks power. When you know what you have, it is difficult for you, for somebody to promise you that. And by promising you, they cheat you. The last group of people, that I'm going to address are the immature, but they have resident power in them. The first scripture I shared with you today is the scripture of the hair as a child. The hair is perfect every step of the journey. When the hair is born, is already the hair. When the hair is six years old, is already the hair. When the hair is 18, is the hair. When the hair is 54, is the hair. Or maybe by now, is the king. You don't become hair when you are five years old. You have been it from the beginning. Sisters and brothers, you have been perfect from scratch. You are just coming to the understanding of your full rights. Don't look down on yourself because you have not known enough. You are being revealed. Many of us, we worry about our current state. You shouldn't be worried. When I wake up in the morning and I haven't got my makeup, it doesn't stop me from being a mobile like Jeffreys. <laughs> no. When my children, when they're like, Mom, can we, can we come? I say, look, all over the world, 
Nobody else has a right to pull on me anytime like you do. Why? You are the selected two that God has given me. Age one, you are. Age 12, you are. Age 28, you are. Age 38, you are. They will not become my children one day. They are my children from birth. Immature, but powerful. If you realize that the fact that you are not yet there does not stop the fact that God has loaded you with grace, you will cease to shake. When people who appear to be big confront you. Many years ago, a few people contacted me, starting off in ministry. They were questioning me. What do you think you are doing? Where did you come up with this idea? I laughed. Some of them said, we need to be involved in what you're doing. You've got no experience. I laughed. I remember I asked one gentleman who contacted me. I said, please, what exactly is it that I'm doing? <laughs> I said, what is it that I'm doing? The fact that the ministry is one year old and only 15 people follow me does not mean I don't know where I'm going. I am loaded to perfection. Even whilst I'm still getting it together. If you understand that, then you will not be a prey. People will not bamboozle you, including spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. God gave you an idea. God gave you a project. People who were not there are telling you what to do. This is a word for somebody. And you think that, okay, you should listen to them because you are not quite perfect yet. Mm. Hey! Don't. From your ears, from the mouth of God to your ears, direct instruction. You are perfect for the duty. You are perfect for the role. There are women here, you are listening to me. And you are saying, ah, you don't understand, Omobi. I won't go to perfect this, my marriage. Sister, if you married the man that God has given you, you are the best wife he can have. You don't need any extra thing apart from just stay in the presence of God and get information about the man God has sent you to. Man, you're looking at me and you're saying, Omobi, if only I can have this. I can be perfect as a father for my children. No, you are perfect. God looked at you. The Bible says he places people in families. That means you and your wife together. God looked at the at the skill set that is needed to raise that destiny. And he looked, he looked all over the world. He looked in India. He looked in Afghanistan. He looked in UK. He looked in Australia. And he says, so, oh yes, oh yes, I found somebody in the city of United States. That is the person. And boy, go to that family because they have the skill set to take care of you. When your children, most especially your teenagers, are misbehaving, you start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt whether you're a good parent. You start to doubt whether you, you, you're good enough. He says, I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. You're perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect for where you are right now. You're perfect for the future that God has given you. You're perfect. The fact that some, some, some things need to be worked on, they need to be improved, it doesn't make you less perfect. The fact that you're still in the oven, it doesn't make you less perfect. The fact that you're going through some situation right now, it doesn't make you less perfect. Why are we looking for what is not lost? I'm going to lead you to pray. Simply because when we have understanding, it is easier for us to move and to align ourselves with God and his purpose for us. Going back to the first thing, I told you about the unaware well. Unaware well. I'm not sure if people can unmute themselves now so that we can pray. I'm going to lead you to pray for about eight minutes and then I will let you go. God 
Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10 says, Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking. They are not from the Bible. They are from human thinking. I want you to pray right now and say, Father, you created me to be perfect and ready. I am equipped with all that I need. I may have been ignorant of this for a long time. I'm asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will introduce me to myself. Father, show me who I am. Father, reveal to me the person that I am. You created me to be perfect. You created me lacking nothing. You created me missing nothing. This morning, I am asking that you will introduce me to to myself, that you will show me who I really am, that you will show me who I really am, expose myself to me, so the enemy will not deceive me anymore, many people people who appear to be perfect, they are making me feel inadequate they are giving me impression that I need to do something extra, Father this morning, you have told me Lord, uh, that you have perfected me you have perfected my destiny you have perfected where I am going you have perfected who I am, for this reason I ask oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will introduce me to me, you will reveal me to me that I may have full understanding in Jesus name we have prayed spiritual exercise is, is good you need to pray, yes you can fast, yes you can set yourself aside, you can do without food if food is your distraction but everything that you need is already in you you can activate whatever it is that is in you by spending time in the presence of God. Majority of us, we have chosen fasting above knowing God. They're two different things. To fast is to go without food. You can fast without having any encounter with God at all. You cannot sit down and study the word without having an encounter with God. Ask that the Lord will show you areas where you need to improve yourself. Areas where you need to gain understanding. Areas where you need to fight. Areas where you need to, to lean on God. Areas where you need to expand your horizon. Say that, Father, open my eyes and let me see. Father, expose to me areas where I need to improve things that I need to do, things that I need to learn, things that I need to sharpen myself, to sharpen my understanding of you, to sharpen my perception of you. This is my prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Many people, they have not been able to access their full capacity, their full potential because they don't know how. Because they don't know how. Maybe it was easy for me. I got understanding of what God called me to do in a prayer meeting. I was mingling with some brethren as an undergraduate and I was, we were praying in the spirit. And within that particular meeting, a word came and the Lord says that this woman, you or Mobala, you will gather women together to pray. You will instruct, you will correct and because I already knew that God had called me, I took that word. And men and brethren, guess what? I sat on that word from 1995. The ministry did not start until 2009. 14 years I waited. 14 years I was studying. 14 years I was praying. 14 years I was sharpening my skills, my ability to communicate with people, my friendliness, my courtesy, how to treat people, how to talk to people. For 14 years, it was still the same me that God called. It was still the same me that God ordained. But for 14 years, I was getting ready. There are things you need to do whilst you are preparing yourself to get onto your throne. I need you to ask this morning that the Lord will show you what you need to do to access fully that which God has empowered you to do. It is still the same you. You are already perfect for the job, but there are things you need to tweak here and there. You need to mix the butter with the sugar. You need to mix the sugar with the flour, and then you need to go into the oven, and you need to be there for a period of time. It is only on this occasion that you can come out uh, ready to function. Say, Father, whatever I need to do, I receive insight. I receive direction. I receive instruction. In the name of Jesus, you will show me how I need to go. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Bible says regarding the hair that is still a, 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 a child. The Bible says that he is committed to 
grown up to a responsible adult who will support him until he's ready. Many of us need support. You're going to pray today that the Lord will connect you to activators. We need activators. As the Lord will connect you to activators who will help you to unravel what God has deposited in you. You're a married woman, you're a married man, you need activators. You need people who will say, mm, eh, this is what happens here. People who have ears connected to God. Not just people who are giving you the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men is very common these days. People will tell you, ah, you know, you cannot do well in ministry. You cannot have finance in ministry. Except you, sow, you, you ask people to sow seed. You ask people to give to you. Those are all lies. Those are all lies. If you have a spiritual mentor, and that is what they are teaching you, hey, you're already working in error. The Bible says that your father, the one who called you, is the owner of the cattle upon a thousand hills. And he can sustain what he has started. He is able to lead people to give to you without you asking for anything. You need to pray for activators, people who will be there, who will guide you and say, this is the way, who will guide you and say, this is how it needs to be done. People whose ears are connected to heaven, people who can hear God on your behalf, people who can say, this was what God said you should do. This is how God is leading you. The people who confirm the word of God to you, I need you to pray right now and say, Father, connect me to activators uh, who will help me unravel what you've deposited in me. Connect me to activators. Uh, people who whose ears are connected to you. Connect me to activators. Uh, people who know what they are doing. Connect me to activators. Uh, people who will support me and hold me by the hand. Uh, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. <laughs> A lot of us are seeking perfection and affirmation in the wrong places. If you remember what I said earlier on about the devil. The devil said to Jesus, bow down and worship me. I will give you. The person who does not have anything is promising plenty. When you're seeking for affirmation in the wrong places, you find yourself bowing down to many people. I'll give you another example. You're a married lady. There are some high-flying ladies you see around you. They are controlling their husband's life. And you like how they appear on the outside. And they say, come with us. We will show you what to do so that your husband will listen to you. Because you are ignorant that you are perfect for that man. But you just need a little wisdom in that marriage. You follow the wrong path. They're promising to give you control. The control they do not have. The person who has control does not manipulate. The person who has real control, they don't manipulate. Why? Because the power belongs to them. You're going to pray today and say, Father... I may have been seeking perfection and affirmation in the wrong places. From this minute onward, I break free from the chains of the opinion of men. From the chains of the opinion of men. The word of God says that, that these people, they, are, they have been captured with empty philosophy. Philosophies that do not have any base. There is no substance in it. You will say, Father, I am asking today, I break free from the opinions of men. I break free from the desire to be affirmed by men. I break free by seeking perfection in the eyes of men. I don't need to be perfect in the eyes of men to be perfect in your presence. This morning, I ask, O oh Lord, that you will help me, that I'll break free, Lord God Almighty, from the limitations and the bondage that I've created for myself. This I ask. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. The Bible says that without me, you can do nothing. You are the branches. I am the tree. There is no perfection without the source. There is no perfection without the source. Many of us, we are not aligned with God. We are not aligned at all. You cannot, you are made to live in Ireland. You're living in Ghana and you're praying for perfection. It will never happen. You will always be in trouble. You will always be in lack. Why? The people who are meant to provide for you are waiting for you in Ireland. We just raise prayer point. <coughs> Excuse me. We raise prayer point. Divine perfection. God does not perfect what he doesn't have a hand in. 
God does not perfect you when you're walking outside his will. What is his will for you? What is his will for you? You're going to pray and say, Father, it is in you that I am perfect. I align myself with you today so that good may come to me. I align myself with you today so that good may come to you. It is in walking with you that I am perfect. It is in being connected to you that I am perfect. For this reason, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that, Father, you will help me. You will push me in line with your will. You would align me with your will. You will push me in the direction I need to go. The word of God says, uh, for you will hear a voice uh, from behind you saying, this is the way walking. Eh? I pray this morning in the name of Jesus, the Father Lord, uh, you will instruct me everywhere, every aspect of my life uh, in which I have removed myself from your line, uh, in which I have removed myself from, from alignment with you. I declare this morning, I become aligned uh, with your will, with your way in the name of Jesus so that good may come to me. I align myself with your will. I align myself with your will. I align myself with your will. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Many people speak to us. Many people speak in our ears. It is very, very easy for you to walk out of your uh, you know, alignment with God because of people who speak to you. Naturally, people are hurt. And a lot of people out there are hurt. And what do they do? They go out to hurt other people. People who have lost touch with God go out to make you lose touch with God. Some people are not happy with the results you're getting. And what do they do? They leak virtue from you. They come with a purpose of, oh, we need to counsel you and advise you what to do. I've had people come to me before to suggest that I start matchmaking services. People have said to me, oh, Mobi, you know, you know, godly sisters, you know, sisters, by virtue of thy precious jewels, you know, so many people. How about if you connect men, there are godly men out there, they're looking for wives. And I'm like, you add it to my job description? It is not every suggestion, good suggestion, that is your suggestion. It is not every good project that is your project. Why are we moving away and we're giving ourselves jobs that God has not given us, but we are asking God to bring himself into it? Somebody say, I see you. You will be good in this. I remember a while ago. One of my sisters, I, 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 I had a few ladies who came from the United States. I invited them to Nigeria to a conference. And whilst they were in my hotel room, one of my sisters sat down and was talking to one of these guests from the United States and said to her, you need to be heard. You need to be out there. And this lady took those words literally. And then she now messaged this lady from the United States and said, all I need now is a letter for you to invite me so that people in the United States can hear me. So this minister now contacted me and said, I don't understand. Why is your lady asking me to give her invitation letter and sort out visa for her? And I asked, I said, what was the discussion between you? And then she told me what she said. And I realized the error of my sister. The fact that somebody made a suggestion to you does not mean they're speaking the mind of God. We need to be alert. We need to be awake. We need to know what belongs to us. We need to know what doesn't. The devil said to Jesus, bow down and I will give you all of this. If only he realized that Jesus knew what was his. People will make promises to you. They will make suggestions. But once you're aware of what God has given you, it is easy. You're going to pray today and say, Father, from today I silence every tongue which has addressed me or which will address me in the future with the purpose of taking me away from your plan. And it doesn't matter how nice it sounds. It doesn't matter how inviting it sounds. 
You have made me perfect. You have made my journey perfect. You have made my ministry perfect. I align myself uh, with the access and the rights uh, that you have given to me. I will not seek another. I will not seek another. I will not seek another. This is my prayer tonight. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You're going to pray. And you're going to make this declaration. You will say from now on, I plant a border of confidence in Christ around me. And I banish every feeling of inadequacies. I reign in Christ. Uh, and I refuse to be pulled into self-pity. A lot of people are in self-pity. They are saying, oh, I'm not good enough. If only I had this, I would be okay. No, you are good enough. You are loaded. Uh, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in you bodily. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in you bodily. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in you bodily. Today, break free from every feeling of of inadequacy because divinely you have been perfected divinely you have been equipped uh, divinely you have been made ready divinely the, god himself he checked the product and he gave it a check uh, he says it is good enough in jesus name we have prayed we're going to pray the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 7 to 8 he says we do not yet see everything under his feet he says, for a little while, he was made lower than the angel. Yet, you crowned him. You crowned him. Did you see that? You crowned. The crowning had already happened. The crowning had already happened. But he was made a little lower than the angel for a little season. He says, you put everything under his control. But for a moment, it appears that things are not under his control. Some of you, my dear sisters and brothers, you are in that position right now where it appears Things are not under control. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that you have been crowned. You have been crowned. Things may not be. It may look as though they are not. You have been crowned. You will say, Father, life may have thrown me down with challenges from today because I know I have been crowned. I am receiving the strength to get up. I am receiving the strength to stand up. I am re receiving the strength to march. I am receiving the strength to take my place. Whatever has thrown me down, it is only for a short while. Whatever has belittled me, it is only for a moment. Tonight, I Stand uh, in my position as a perfect project. Uh, God has checked me out and he has given me a tick. Uh, he says, I meet the criteria for excellence. Uh, he says, I meet the criteria for perfection. He says, I am good enough for the purpose. Uh, he says, I am ready for the task ahead. Uh, it may be that I've made a few mistakes. Uh, it may be that the things I have done, uh, I am not I am not proud to share them, but I declare tonight, uh, for the little time I was made lower than the angels, uh, but I stand upon my my point tonight. I stand upon my throne tonight and I declare that I've been crowned. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. We're now going to receive the grace to recover all. The Bible says for a little while, for a little while, he seemed lower than the angel, but he has been crowned. He has been crowned. You're going to say, Father, the grace to recover all. It doesn't matter what I've lost due to error. It does not matter what I've lost due to mistake. It does not matter what I've lost because I did not have understanding. Father, from today, I begin to recover all. In the month of August, I begin to recover all. Every territory that belongs to me, I begin to access them. In the name of Jesus, I begin to access them. As I gain understanding, as I gain insight, I declare in the name of Jesus, I begin to access them. The territories you've given to me, the places you have given me, I decree now, in the name of Jesus, I begin to access them. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God did not create us to be pathetic. There are people, when you meet them, once you say hello, my name is this, they introduce themselves. The first thing that comes out of their mouth is, hmm, if only you know what I've been through. If only you've known my story. If they are ever so pathetic. You will pray today and you will say, Father, you did not create me to be pathetic. The glory and the honor that you crowned me with shall become obvious, shall become evident from today. In the name of Jesus, I gain control over all that is mine. I take over the reins of my life uh, back from the enemy and I exert dominion this morning. In the name of Jesus, I am not a victim. I have never been a victim. I may have been down for a short while, but this morning I declare... I am taking my place once again. I am taking my place once again. I am taking my place once again. In the name 
of Jesus we have prayed. Some of us need to war. Some of us need to war. We need to fight. You're going to pray this morning and say, Father, strengthen my hand to take over the territories that are mine. Strengthen my arms for war. In the name of Jesus, the devil does not want to give up easily. He took Jesus through how many temptations? But the Bible says, Jesus finally said to him, get out of here. Pray in the name of Jesus. See, Father, enable my arms to war. Enable my arms to fight. Enable my arms to war. Enable my arms to fight. That I will not give in to the enemy easily. That I will not give in to distractions easily. In the name of Jesus. This is my prayer tonight. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We're going to pray two more prayer points and we'll finish. Say, Father, those who are meant to nurture me will not become my hindrance. That is the problem for a good number of people. You have mentors, spiritual mentors, but they don't have understanding. They end up pushing you away from God and his purpose for you. Pray this morning and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that those who you have sent to mentor me, they will do the job. They will do the job. They will do the job. They will not be a distraction. They will not pull me away from you. They will not waste me, not waste my destiny. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Final prayer point. Insight is what makes a child move and progress into being a hair proper that, has, that takes up the throne. Even though he's always been the hair, it is insight. When they black, oh, I am the one who is going to be king. Carriage changes. The way they talk changes. The way they see themselves changes. You're going to pray today and say, Father, most important request from this morning Give me insight into my identity. Give me insight into my identity. I receive insight into my identity. Who I am so that I may enforce that which you have given to me and that which you have created me to be. Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. In Amen. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for that which you have taught us. Thank you, Father, because it is the entrance of your word that brings light. Father, we thank you, Lord, because light has, sh has shone upon our hearts, upon our understanding this morning. And because of that, we know what to do. We know how to do it. We thank you, Father, because divinely you have perfected us. A lot of us may be thrown down by challenges. A lot of us may, may still, you know, be, be, be monitored and nurtured. And because of that, we feel inadequate. This morning, I pray, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, that you will open our eyes, that we may understand what you have created us to be. You looked at us and you've made a declaration that we are complete in you. We are grateful, Lord, because you do not do shoddy jobs. You do perfect projects. And we thank you, Father, because you have considered us perfect. We have a tick of approval from heaven. We are grateful for this privilege. I pray for every man, every woman who is wondering, who am I? Who, what am I supposed to be on this surface of this earth? Father, you will reveal to them who you have scheduled and destined for them to be. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.